Uh, this first video is to go over simplifying radicals and we're just going to cover how to eliminate perfect square factors and one of the rules with radicals is that you cannot have a perfect square go into the rad radicand and this number underneath the radical symbol is called the radicand. So you have to know what a perfect square factor is and it's simply a number that is a square of another uh, whole number and we have this list here of numbers from 1 to 12 and what their square is. So 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4 and so on down the list and I always recommend that you just make up a list like this right before you get started so that you have this list here, the one on the right hand column, handy because those are perfect squares and you can take the square root of those and get an integer answer. Um, if you do it a lot you start to get really comfortable and you can mentally figure out what the factors are but if you're not really that comfortable with it and you have a calculator hand, handy, just simply take that number, so in this case 52, and you find the first number that's less than 52, which would be 49, and to take that number divide it by that number. Um, some of you can just kind of look at it and go 52 cannot be divided by 49 without a remainder. Um, some of you, you know, would need to um, try it. So we'll just actually try it and you'll see what happens. If I do 52, oops, I got to clear that, 52 divided by 49. Of course, I get um, a number with a remainder. So let's try the next lower perfect square, and that's going to be 36. So I'll take 52 divided by 36. Nope, that doesn't work either. I need to have something that's an integer. I'm going to go to 25. So 52 divided by 25. That gives me 2.08. That's not going to work either. Um, I'm going to go down to 16. So 52 divided by 16. That's 3.25. No, that's not going to work either. How about 9? 52 divided by 9. Nope. And last, let's do 52 divided by 4. Ah, that works. I get a 13. What that tells me is if 52 divided by 4 equals 13, that means that the factors are that I can use are 52 or um, 13 and 4. So what I like to do is take the perfect square number, that's the one that's on this list, I like to put that one first, and then what I'm doing is I'm breaking 52, or the square root of 52, up into two factors, 4 and 13. And um, now I can simply simplify the square root of 4. Since it's a perfect square, I know that I can turn that into a 2. And my answer is 2 times the square root of 13. And as long as this number has no remaining perfect squares that go into it perfectly, you're done. So let's take number, the 98. Um, I'm looking for numbers less than um, 98, so I'll start with 81. So 98 divided by 81. Oops, oh, I've got to change the, change this, just take, sorry about that. So 98 divided by 81. That doesn't work. So 98 divided by 64. Doesn't work. 98 divided by 36. Or 49. I haven't done that one yet. And of course that works. So I know that 98 can be divided by 49 uh, and I get 2. So two, what that means is 2 times 49 equals 98. So I'm going to break this one into 49 square root of 49 times the square root of 2. And then I can simply convert or simplify the square root of 49 into 7 because the square root of 49 is a 7. And now I have the square root of 98 simplified. Let's take 175. You see a lot of these and you'll immediately know that that's a multiple of 25. But you, you know, if you went through the list, um, you would you know, probably want to start as high as you need to go. I, if you want to start at 144, that's fine. Usually, um, if you could mentally at least cut it in half, the number should be less than half. So you could start with 81. But I know right away that 25 is the highest perfect square that will go into 175. And just to, to verify that, I'm going to do 175. Turn it back into my mouse. So 175 divided by 25. Think about how many, um, how many quarters would go into $1.75 and that, if that helped you. So I know that 175 can be broken up into 25 times 
7. And so the, the square root of 175 can be broken up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 7. And the square root of 25, I can simplify to 5. And there's 5 times the square root of 7. Let's try 108. Um, I know this can be 54 or less, because that's half of 108. So let's just go down to 49. We can try it. If you need to do it, go ahead and try it. I'm just going to kind of walk through it here. 108 divided by 49. Nope, that doesn't work. So let's take the next highest one. That's 36. 108 divided by 36. And look at that. 108 can be divided by 36, and it equals 3. So I'm going to turn this one into 36. The square root of 36 times the square root of 3. And I can simply cross off or simplify the square root of 36 and make it a 6. And I'm done. And last one, last example here is 300. Um, yeah, half of 300 is 150. And just, but just immediately when I, I see the 144 and the 121, I realize that I've got 100 there. And 100 is a perfect square. So I know that 300 can be divided by 100. And I know that that's a 3. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it. That turns into 100, a square root of 100 times the square root of 3. And I'm going to simplify the square root of 100 and turn it to a 10. So the square root of 100 is a 10. Okay? So this is just um, the first video. It shows just how to eliminate the perfect square factors when you're simplifying radicals. Thanks for watching.